All right, so in this video, we're going to derive Bragg's Law. And Bragg's Law is what tells you the conditions under which you're going to get uh, constructive interference. You're going to get peaks in uh, your x-ray diffraction pattern. Remember what you're doing in this experiment is you're varying the angle okay, of the incoming x-rays to then back out the distance between atoms to then reconstruct the uh, structure of a molecule or, or, or an extended solid or whatever species, chemical species it is. Okay. And so uh, this is Bragg's law right here. D is what you're looking for. That's, that's the spacing between the atoms. N is any integer, could be one, two, et cetera. Um, lambda is the wavelength of the x-rays. So this is gonna be something you know, in the nanometers, small nanometers, uh, divided by two sine and theta is what you're varying in the experiment. And you know, at critical theta, which is why there's a C here, you, you'll get a peak, okay? Where will you get a peak? Well, um, that depends on where you have constructive interference, right? Um, so where are you going to get constructive interference? So let's, let's look at this diagram. So this ray, uh, light ray, this X-ray in green here, I'm calling ray one. Okay, so that's coming in and then it's going to uh, reflect off of the, um, the uh, uh, atoms okay, at whatever the angle is that you, you, you choose, okay? So here it's shown theta. This angle is also theta, okay? They're, these are parallel, one and two are parallel. And it's gonna come out, okay, at the same angle, theta. It's, it's just, it's, it's a perfect reflection like that, okay? And ray two is doing the same thing. It's coming in at same th theta because they're parallel. And then it's gonna bounce off, okay, um, and come out at theta. So this is theta down here. That angle right there is theta. The only difference is this second ray isn't bouncing off of the, the top atoms, okay? It's gonna be bouncing off of the bottom atoms. And so in order to get a peak, you need um, the troughs and the peaks of the two rays to line up. See how these are lining up. So this is a constructive uh, interference that, that I'm showing right here. So when is that gonna happen? Well, the second ray has to travel um, this extra distance, okay, of this in, in the pink here. That's the extra difference traveled by the second wave. And so uh, let's just call that, you know, this point A, okay, and let's call this point B, and let's call this point C. Uh, then in order to have constructive interference, you know, A segment AB plus segment BC is gonna have to be equal to, uh, well, in one case, it could be equal to lambda. If it's equal to lambda, that would just be meaning that it shifted, you know, a whole peak, uh, uh, basically an extra wavelength. So yeah, the peak of the second wave is just uh, in the same position as where the first wave is. So, um, but it turns out, right, this can be any number N of wavelengths and it'll work out. So in this diagram, um, n is actually equal to two. So you can see that here, okay, there's a peak, and then here's, here's supposed to be a peak, okay? And so um, how many extra peaks does this have to travel? Well, it's sort of starting here, so that's a zero point. And then this pink, it goes one, two extra, see, two extra wavelengths. And as long as it does two extra wavelengths like that, then the third peaks line up. So you're gonna have to construct an interference. It could have done three extra, or four extra, or one extra, any integer amount. Those, that's the only time though, that you'll have the peaks lining up when they, when they um, come out. So you're just shifting the second wave to different peaks, but as long as it's peak to peak, right? It's constructive interference. So that's N equals theta. So that's the first part of that, about this. The second part of this, um, we have to kind of do some trigonometry and so, I'm just going to write it out right here. And so uh, this is D. Okay, so those are our two planes of the atoms. And then we're going to have uh, our two waves. Okay, and so we're going to come in like that. And I'm going to draw this in red just so uh, we can kind of correlate this with the, the pink. So um, we're going to have some extra space here. Okay. This is going to be our segment A, B, and then this is going to be our segment B, C. 
okay? And um, it's gonna look something like this. And you'll see this in a second. This is our second wave. So this is wave number one, uh, or sorry, this is wave number two. This is wave number one, okay? And this wave number one just bounced straight out, right? Um, but <clears throat> this wave number two went down to the bottom atoms and bounced out, okay? Uh, but we know from our discussion of theta here that um, this is theta, okay? That's, that's one of the thetas. And if that's theta, all right, then um, just, just by, uh, uh, just by some, some ge geometric relationships, okay, this, this angle here, I'll show you right here, right? These are uh, what is called ver vertical angles. Um, and so, I'm sorry about that. These are vertical angles. So these ones, that's also equal to theta. So this is a right angle here, okay? So now we have a right triangle. Basically, I just make it, drew, drew a right triangle there. So this second wave is coming in, okay? And we have a right triangle. And so now we have this equal to theta and, and we have AB. And so <clears throat> we know that this dashed line is equal to what? It's equal to D, right? And so now we can use, you know, uh, Sakatoa, right? Uh, sine theta we know is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is segment AB, okay? And what's hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse of this triangle is D, okay? And so um, AB is gonna be equal to sine theta, uh, uh, D sine theta, just, just multiplying by D, okay? And we know that uh, these triangles, uh, you can prove pretty easily, are basically the same, okay? They're, they're the same. So in other words, um, AB is equal to BC, okay? So uh, what this tells us at the top here is that this is really 2AB. And so um, this whole thing comes down to, uh, you know, N theta equals 2AB, okay? Well, if N theta equals 2AB, then uh, if we substitute this in, we're, we're going to have uh, that, uh, if we times this by two, right? We're gonna now have n theta equals two d sine two d sine theta. Okay, which is Bragg's law. Just uh, if we want to rearrange it, we can. We just divide um, out some things. So this is gonna be uh, just divide by two sine theta, right? So that's Bragg's law. So that's where Bragg's law comes from. Uh, it's a pretty simple derivation. Hopefully you can see it's all just about constructing waves and this extra uh, con constructive interference between waves and this extra distance that uh, this pink distance that the wave has to travel. And so, you know, there's spacing between these atoms, right? That's why you get that one of these waves being able to go through to the, to the bottom atom and another wave, you know, just, just bouncing off, right?